What's better than one Doug Funko Pop? A Carl Funko Pop. What's better than a Carl Funko Pop? A Russell Funko Pop. <laughs> Let's get to it. Hi everyone, I'm Sandy. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I have a thousand and one book countdown for you, but as you saw in the opening, um, I had shown Doug from Up in my What's Making, What's Cheering Me Up Right Now video, and my husband, my lovely husband, ended up getting me these two. I'm just so thrilled. I think he's adorable. Look at him. He's so cute. And Russell, absolutely adorable. Uh, so yeah, that just is additionally cheering me up today. But <laughs> Hi, I'm Sandy and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Uh, so if you're not familiar with the 1001 Book Countdown, I'll leave a card up here for you where you can go check out the original video and hear all the details about what I'm doing. But basically I'm reading books off of this 1001 Books You Must Read Before You Die list and I'm just slowly working my way through that project. I did of course combine all editions of the book which has over 1300 books on it and I have read now over 300 and something books. I have 930 Three, 33, yes, 933 books left to read. So I'm making significant progress, uh, but you know, <laughs> it's going to be a long project. So hopefully can, uh, please consider giving me a subscribe and continuing on my journey with me as I work my way through this massive project. Uh, but for today, what we will do is go ahead and put up our numbers, which are 933 and, oh, <laughs> I have to look 37. And 37 is the uh, number that represents what I have left to read in 2022. Every year at the beginning of the year, I pre select 52 books. And those are the books I really want to focus on off of the list. Uh, and, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm a little behind, but, I, ooh, but <laughs> I'm still having a lot of fun reading on it. So, reading from the list. But uh, that's where I am at with the numbers. All right, so the book I'm going to talk about today is my book club pick for May. Uh, it also was part of my Asian readathon reading, and that book is Wild Swans by Yang Chang. Uh, so this book was originally published in 1991 and covers her mother, her grandmother, her family, and her her life in mainland China from about 1930s to late 1970s. Uh, this book, interestingly enough, is currently banned in China, and after having read it. I can see why the government may not want this book out in China. Uh, but the book really goes through and documents her grandmother's life, her mother's life, and her life as you as they are aging in China. Uh, it goes through very difficult circumstances of her grandmother. I don't want to spoil the book for anyone. It is nonfiction, uh, but I don't really want to share some of the details that made the book really compelling for me. I found the grandmother story the best part of this book. Her grandmother and what she lived through, um, even for, from a very young age, was traumatic. Uh, and some of the physical stuff that was done to her that was seen to be beautiful when she was young was very difficult to read. Um, it goes through all of the challenges that her grandmother had with her, her relationships, uh, where she didn't have a lot of choice in who she was with, uh, that her, her family basically and gave her to someone. I, I don't I kind of don't want to spoil it. Uh, but she her her grandmother uh, was someone that I love that story. It was not loved in that it was an easy read, but the, her grandmother sounds like an amazing person. Uh, sounds like she was an amazing person and was really an interesting and compelling part of the story. And there's so much that you read in that first section that is just heartbreaking to read. Um, and then as you go on into uh, her mother's story, you start to get more of Chairman Mao, you start to get more of the misinformation, you start to get more of the political uh, aspects of mainland China during this time. You get you to know her father and her mother in her, her writing, through her writing, and their story is in a very, very difficult time in China as well, where there was a cultural revolution, there was a famine that occurred. Uh, it is one that 
the persecution that happened, people being put in camps, people being accused and put in detention, told they were being released, but oh, you're being watched, sometimes told that they were being watched by their own family member, that whole aspect of living in that country. Uh, and also the propaganda about Chairman Mao. By the time the author was born, uh, there was a cult of Mao and Mao was great. Mao was amazing. And anyone who said anything negative about Chairman Mao was seen as being against him and against the party and uh, it was really tough. And young people were brought into that through something called the Red Guards and how they were a big part of some of this cultural revolution that was done in mainland China. Um, and if you were educated, if you had things like books, you were seen as being bourgeois and against the party. Uh, they had book burnings. They had so much that happened in that time uh, that was just really difficult. One of the reasons why I think, I, or why this may still be banned in China is that idea of misinformation, limiting access to information, that may still be something that happens in China today. I am not super familiar with current events in China. It's only the stuff that I've heard on the periphery that that is the case. Uh, so yeah, I, I can see why part of that would be. She ended up getting a scholarship, uh, the author, and Li left, um, left China right before the Tiananmen Square, right around that same time frame. And so the book really stops right about the time she leaves and goes to Britain. So she doesn't talk about current events. She doesn't talk about, it was published in 91, so you know that's now 30 years ago? Is that true? Yes, 31 years ago, my goodness. I'm old. <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> but um, yeah, so no current events, no current thoughts on anything happening in China. But a couple of the themes, if, you're, if you do read this, know that there are themes of suicide, there's themes of mental illness, there's themes of torture and persecution. It is a very compelling read, but incredibly tough. Uh, it is one of those books that I'm so happy to have read it. And I think that there are parts of this book will, that will live with me for a long time, but it is, it is a tough, it is a tough read in places. Uh, one of the things though with this book is the grandmother and the mother stories were impactful in the beginning of the book. Once we hit the author story, it got a little slow in there. And it made it a lot harder to kind of finish through the book and really get through what was left. And I don't know if some of it was because of everything that happened in the beginning was so big and so traumatic. By the time we got to her story, while not easy, was it didn't feel as bad quite as some of the things that had happened to her parents and to her. And so I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know if it was, by the time we got to her story, if it was just, it was so much information that it made it just really long to kind of get through. Obviously she had a lot more details about her story because she lived it rather than hearing from her mother and her grandmother their stories. Uh, so, but that second half of the book, the end of the book, just was a little long and a little hard uh, and wasn't as engaging as the first part of the book was for me. I ended up giving it a four star because I I just, that second half just was a bit of a, a tougher read for me. But Wild Swans is my book club pick for May. Yay! I can't believe I'm done this early. I'm very happy I'm done this early because I have a lot of different reads coming up. But what we get to do now is we get to remove, we get to reduce down the numbers from 9.33 to 9.32. And it is on the list of pre-selected books for 2022. So it gets to go from 37, yes, 37 to 36. Um, yeah, super happy with where I'm at uh, as far as what I ended up finishing this week. I am also still working on The Magic Mountain by Thomas Mann. You see there is a book cart mark in there. I am making progress. I have to admit, I'm largely listening to this book. Uh, it is so dense in this version. I mean, it is just packed full of text. 
and it's just hard to read it and I don't have it as a digital book with this translator I can't get that from the library I'm not gonna buy this book because I know that this isn't one that I'm gonna keep and want to read again but I am making progress on it I don't know when I'll finish it but I am making progress and then I have a buddy read starting as well with Courtney Farader for Call It Sleep by Henry Roth this one is also on the 2022 list we will have our first check-in on Sunday and then uh, next week I'm starting a buddy read with a monster book which is why I pushed also to get rid of done with wild swans because I knew this was coming I will be reading 1Q84 by Haruki Murakami with Fraser Simon uh, Springboard Thought if you're not familiar with Fraser's channel you should definitely go check him out and Courtney's channel of course uh, but Fraser I'm so glad I'm reading this with Fraser because Fraser is incredibly smart and I'm hoping he can help explain this book to me. Murakami's book I have often been a struggle because I don't understand at a point what's going on. I think I know and then all of a sudden something else happens and I we're in the bottom of a well. Why are we why are we in the bottom of a well again? That was a different Murakami book, not this one, but we will be starting this one next week. For non thousand and one books I have started uh, this lovely book uh, the memoirs of Lady Hyung Young and I, again I don't know if that's the right way to say that name so I apologize uh, but I have I'm doing a buddy read with Britta Bowler and we have our first check-in tomorrow you can see there is a bookmark in it so I have started it so yay and then I have another book um, another buddy read with Kristen from Enter the Book and we are reading Such a Fun Age. Uh, she's already left me a message so I will be probably reading this one this afternoon or reading a bunch of that this afternoon and uh, that is what I have as far as current reads go and so yeah having fun reading some of these books. I have um I don't know what I'm doing. I have picked up Funny and Farsi as well and uh, this one is really fun to read. It's super easy read. I'm just going to read this when I want something light to read. No pressure to finish this anytime soon. So whenever I want to pick this one up. Uh, and then after that, uh, who knows? We'll see how long these books take me because they are some big books. But uh, that's what I have upcoming in the next couple of weeks. But as always, like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, everyone, thanks. Bye.